In May 2020, current UCL history students came together to reflect on their experiences at UCL history and to pass on their tips and advice to future cohorts of incoming undergraduates through a series of thematic panel discussions. The idea underpinning the project is for current students to help future cohorts to transition smoothly into life in our department and to create a stronger sense of community within the department. The project is led by Dr Chloe Ayrton and Dr Patrick Lanchner and builds on the work the two of them started with the History Society at the induction weekend in 2019, where they hosted a panel discussion with students on the theme of being a historian at university. Building on the concept of hosting panel discussions with current students, over the course of four days in May 2020, current students and history tutors came together to reflect on the experience of studying history at UCL and life in London. This video is one of the nine panel discussions that we produced for the project. Welcome to our third panel discussion with UCL history students. This is panel discussion three. What is the structure of the BA history degree? Understanding the first year core modules as building blocks in your degree. This discussion forms part of the UCL history undergraduate induction student panel discussions project. Hi, my name is Jay Burrows. I'm a third year history student here at UCL um, and I'm co-convener of this project alongside Chloe. My particular research interests are situated in gender history in modern Germany, particularly sexual violence in the Holocaust. I will be pursuing these interests further as of October at the University of Oxford, where I'll be doing a master's in modern European history. And I'm also the current UCL History Society president. Hello, my name is Chen Hao Luo and I'm a first year student at UCL History. Uh, my historical interests include intellectual history and cultural history broadly. Upon graduation, I'm thinking about doing a master and a PhD later to uh, enter the academia or doing some academic research. Hi, I'm Adila. I'm in my second year. I'm going into my third year. Um, I'm most interested in global history and for my extracurricular activities, I've been involved with UCL STAR, which is uh, UCL Student Action for Refugees, and I've also been involved with UCL Islamic Society. Hi guys, my name is Finn. I'm in my final year here at UCL History. Um, my particular interests have been in kind of economic and cultural history, especially during the modern period. Um, during my time at UCL, I was a member of a lot of different clubs and societies, but uh, the one I'd like to mention is uh, UCL Emperors, which is the American football team. I was a co-captain and I ran the Movember fundraiser in my final year there. Uh, my plans for post-university are to go back. Uh, I'm going to do a master's degree in management next year, either in uh, London Business School or Smurfit in Dublin, uh, depending on, you know, coronavirus circumstances. Um, and I plan to go into a career in management consulting. Hi, uh, my name's Lauren. I'm a second year student going into my third year at UCL. Um, my main interests throughout my degree have pretty much been American history uh, with a bit of British history. And my aspirations for after university, I'm not really sure yet, but maybe something within government. Hi, my name is Kristen Allison, and I am a second year history with a year abroad student. I am hoping to go to the University of California, Santa Barbara at some point in 2021. And I am particularly interested in American foreign policy and immigration history. As with most 20 year olds, I'm not really sure what I want to do in the future, but I am interested in possibly going into diplomacy or working for NGOs. Hi, I'm Chloe Ayrton. I'm a lecturer here in the History Department at UCL and I am leading, along with my colleague Dr. Patrick Lanchner, this really exciting project called UCL History Student Induction Video Resources, which really is part of the work that he and I are both doing in September to welcome in the new cohort of incoming undergraduate students. And we've been leading a series of panel discussions with current students to talk about various themes of life as a history student here at UCL. And you'll be seeing quite a lot of me over the course of these videos because I am uh, chairing all of the discussions. Hello, I'm Patrick Lanchner. I'm a historian of Europe and the Islamic world in the later Middle Ages, or what is commonly known as the Age of the Crusades. And I'm particularly interested in comparisons that cut across these different spheres of civilization. Together with Dr. Chloe Ayrton, I'm very much looking forward to the panel discussions with students and uh, academics at uh, UCL History about what it means to be a student and a historian at UCL. About this, and I guess I wanted to start off 
the conversation, just thinking back to, you know, if you've just finished your A-levels um, and, and you've done your summer and you're coming into UCL and you've had your induction week and last couple of days ago, we were talking about what does the induction week mean? Just thinking about what is the first year experience like, right? And what are the kind of courses that you do on the first year? And I know that a lot of us have been talking a lot about the course and sort of trying to explain what does the course actually mean <laughs> and, and what they mean, especially in the first year. So I was wondering if any of you could just sort of start off this panel by, by um, talking to us about what are the calls that you do in your first year? You know, what do they look like? What's the experience? Um, I know there's three of them, and I don't know whether, you know, perhaps some of you might want to talk about one more than another, um, but we'd be really interested to just sort of hear your thoughts on the cause. So I wonder whether perhaps we could just start off with um, Jade, uh, you know, talking us through perhaps one of those um, courses. Yeah, so um, I'll start off by talking about writing history. So writing history is a module you'll take in your first year. It's connected to one of your survey modules, so one of your like content-based modules. And essentially, it aims to help you teach, like to help teach what you write at an undergraduate level, as opposed to like an A-level essay. Um, so the it culminates in the 2,500 word essay linked to your survey module. Um, and it, you'll, you'll be in like a group of about five or six people, I think, with a tutor. Um, and the whole purpose is to just teach you how to like take that step from A level or equivalent um, into writing at undergraduate level. So um, it's just a, it's a very like informal setting in the sense that there's five or six other students. It's not very intimidating. Um, you meet once or twice a week, I think, with a tutor. Um, it's all about just writing, like referencing, all the different skills you'll need for writing at undergraduate level. Um, and you get feedback along the way. So you're like never unsupported, which I think is a really important part of it. Um, so your tutor will like ask you to write an introduction one week, uh, another paragraph another week, and they'll give you feedback as you go along. So in essence, the first like marked essay you'll write for UCL will be you'll be supported at every step along the way. Um, which I think is such a reassuring experience coming from school. Um, so the department basically doesn't throw you in at the deep end. It helps you, supports you like throughout the first year, writing your first essay, um, which I think is like a really, really valuable experience. Yes, yeah, so um, that is one of the three modules you'll be doing. Another one is making history, which you will do in the second term of first year, I believe. And that is completely different. It's one of the most unique modules you'll do in um, your history degree at UCL. And I actually think it's one of the most exciting and rewarding because it's a group project and you get allocated to a specific group um, based on specific topics you're interested in. So you do have some flexibility within it, which is great. Um, and what you will do is you'll have to do a series of different projects. You'll have to write journals, you'll do a presentation or a um, piece of acting, whatever you so wish in front of a group of people to discuss your project, whatever you've decided to look at. And then also, finally, you'll do like a video or a museum outlay. It really varies on your group. And that's one of the great things about it. You have given so much freedom. And I think it's one of the modules that really encourages creativity. And as a group project, it's really exciting for first years, I think, because I met, I was really lucky with my group and I made um, really close friendships with them. And I'm still friends with all of them. And we had a great time together. And I think in second term, it's a really nice opportunity to meet new people within your course. You might not know many people from your course or you might just branch outside of your group, which is great. And I personally really enjoyed it. And it's just a great creative opportunity within um, the first year history um, history degree and then also it encourages you to look at material culture so it sort of um, brings you into the world of looking at primary sources and specifically um, sort of material culture as I said and it's really interesting so it encourages you to think of archival research which you'll look at later in your degree. Um, just also adding on to that um, so for me I think making history was such a formative module because it was the first time that I actually felt like a historian um, so my group decided to do an interview with a public historian for our research project, which was on a graveyard in London called Bunhill Fields. Um, it's a non-conformist graveyard where a lot of famous people were buried. So we basically were looking into like the 
t like the 17th century and like socio-political like the environment and how these figures featured into that and so we interviewed a uh, really famous public historian who like specialized in graveyards and like memorialism and stuff like that and so yeah we like got this really original interview which we integrated into our portfolio as part of making history and for me that was one of the most rewarding experiences because it was us actually putting ourselves out there and questioning historians and like getting new insight um so yeah it's a super exciting experience and it's in your first year of uni so you're just like you get straight into it which i think is really really valuable this is also fascinating i i mean i had no idea that there was so much going on uh Tuna, you've just finished your first year do you have anything um you know what was your experience we can't hear you Tuna. sorry uh yeah, I, I pretty enjoy the, the process of making history. You can make friends, you can actually travel in London and do doing historical research uh, in a more dynamic way rather than sitting around the desk and uh, reading books and essay based. And uh, so, um, yeah, uh, we, we went to Tate Modern for a, a architectural project, which is uh, based on material culture to, to uh, analyze something related to colonial culture and, and, and our post-colonial perspectives to, 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 to correct some traditional narratives in the British Empire, uh, which is quite rewarding and it's related to everyday life, it's related to public debate in, in, the, in the UK and, and across the Atlantic world. Yeah, I think um, making history is one of the most, uh, out of all your um, uh, modules in first year it's it's one of the most unique modules um because as Chenna said you're not just sitting down at your desk just revising for you know writing history approaching history you're really out there you know being creative um and it really helps develop like a lot of skills like research skills you're using primary sources um your your communication skills are being you know um, developed you know you're meeting so many different people from different backgrounds um and yeah so oh sorry uh public speaking and presentational skills that they really develop during your um making history module so yeah it's one of the more creative fun modules i would say compared to and I, I will say um just one of the the best things about making history is that it really gives you the kind of it, it is differentiated by the fact that you are living in london um it all of the kind of primary sources that you end up looking at are all tied to the city of London. They're places that you can visit. Um, and that's really one of the important things that they emphasize with the module. Um, and, and that's where you kind of get to see, I think for me, it was one of the first times where I got to see the difference of going to university in London versus other cities. I know a lot of you guys who are just coming into UCL chose UCL because it was in London, because it was a big city. It is a, a draw to a lot of people coming in. And this is, probably more so than almost any other course that you're going to do throughout your degree, with the possible exception of your dissertation. It is your best opportunity to go and explore London, to access these historical archives, to kind of take history from being something that's in a book to something that's a little bit more realistic. It's really so fascinating to hear about your experiences on the making history. Um, and I think one of the things one of the things that attracted me to come to UCL as a member of staff was the making history module, because it really represents um, the uh, philosophy of UCL education, which is research based education. Right. And it sort of gets students doing research very, very early on, gets them being historians, right, doing the historical practice. And I just think it's so wonderful to hear about all these experiences. So my understanding now is that you come into UCL and you have this amazing writing history course that really helps you to sort of develop your skills as a writer. And you have the making history course, which helps you to understand what we actually do as historians. But I'm wondering, you know, are there any other core courses such as thinking about uh, how you actually, you know, conceptualize and, and the sort of method you might approach? You know, and I feel like we're missing something. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, the Approaching History course is basically, it's essentially about historiography and the different schools of thought within um, within the uh, historical discipline. And um, it really helps, it's like, it's like a foundational course, I guess, um, helping you really situate, for example, when you're writing essays, it helps you situate where your argument um, 
the way argument is within a histori historiographical debate. Um, and you also learn about like the evolution of um, histor different historical conversations, and it really helps you contextualize arguments, uh, you know, historical uh, sense and obviously um, the world. So I guess the approaching history, writing history and making history modules, they're really, they're like the core modules for like a foundational base um, for studying history um, as a student and even like becoming a historian. Thank you so much for that, um, Adila. I wonder. Could I come in, maybe? Yeah, yeah, perhaps pa 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 Patrick. <laughs> I just I have a question. You gave such a wonderful account of uh, what happens in your first year and so on. And I have a question really for the second and third year students amongst you. What sort of things did you take away uh, from these core modules for later years? Like what what things really stayed with you from these various core modules? Because core modules, students very often feel uh, they would much rather be doing some form of history rather than studying core modules, but very often they find later on that they actually learn things that are quite useful. So I wonder whether you could talk uh, students through that a little bit. Um, yeah, so I think it's important to understand that when you're when you're coming into UCL, you, first and foremost, you're learning how to be an historian. Um, and that involves a lot of skills which you have either had no experience in doing or you've had some experience, but at a lower level. Um, and, and what the core concept core modules really do is they kind of give you the building blocks to be successful elsewhere. Um, so writing history that covers the kind of basics of like structuring an essay, writing an essay, um, but also the process of managing, um, you know, how you're going to put together your 2500 word essays when you first come to UCL. 2500 word essay is like a piece of a level coursework that you would have potentially taken a year to write um, by the time you get into your third year you're really expected to be able to do those in less than a week um, and it sounds crazy coming in and you're going to go through your first year and you're going to be like how could i possibly complete this work that quickly um, but it's because you kind of learn the process and you learn the skills and um, you know what you could probably learn all of the skills by just doing um, you know, core, like uh, history modules, but it would be it would suck. You wouldn't have any fun doing it. Um, and it's much easier to kind of do these core modules and take really the skills from them um, so that you can be successful later on with regards to writing. Um, yeah, I kind of following on from that, I think for me, approaching history or at the time it was called concepts, it's now changed, um, but it's pretty much the same thing. So it's like about the historiographical process, how historical conversations have evolved over time. For me, that module gave me like the confidence I needed to actually have a voice and like contribute to these conversations, which I think coming from A level, I didn't like you're very discouraged from giving a very strong opinion because A level essays are more of a, you know, for and against and then conclusion. But you learn that like UCL history and like university level history in general is not like that. You're allowed to have a strong opinion. If you want to argue something a certain way, as long as you've got evidence to support it, you're like, you're encouraged to do so. And um, I think for me, learning about the different strands of history early on helped me situate and decide where I wanted to be in that discussion and what I wanted to contribute. Um, so for example, I really was taken by social and gender history in particular. And I'm now pursuing that. I've just finished my dissertation on that and I'm going to go and pursue it at a master's level as well. So I think in terms like long term trajectory it is really, really influential and they do stay with you. Um, I think another good thing about approaching as well is even though you're looking at all different sort of historical concepts um, and themes, it really does give you like you realise what you like and what you don't like. So you might think, oh, I don't like that. So there's no point me going to the lecture. But actually, it's definitely worth still going and seeing if you like it, because you could turn out that you like it and you might want to pursue it going forward. So I think approaching history is really um, useful in helping you decide like future modules that you want to do. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think something that we were all talking about earlier is that I think we all in our first year took these core cool modules for granted and 
sort of thought of them as something that we had to do and we just sort of got on with it and we didn't get any choice in it and so on but I actually think it's really important to make the most of it approaching history is especially very Marmite I didn't like approaching history and now looking back I should have made the most of it and the specific ones I actually engage with I'm now really interested in so I'm thinking oh if only I'd done that with all of them and I would have found out maybe more what I'm interested in and I think you know engaging with these um, compulsory modules doesn't mean that you're going to miss out on the social aspect of first year and I don't think you know you have to think I have to drop everything to be fully engaged with these modules no they don't take a lot of work just go to your lectures go to your seminars engage with the tutors you have and talk to them about it but that doesn't mean that you have to spend your entire week reading for these compulsory modules so I think it's definitely encourages you and provides a toolkit for the future years but it also doesn't take up your entire time at first year at UCL. Uh, for me I think something else with approaching at least that's so beneficial is the fact that each strand of history is taught by a different lecturer in the department so it's a really useful way to kind of get a taster of different professors and like their teaching styles and what their interests are and they bring their research to you and use it to explain like the progression of that historical conversation. And for me, that was especially beneficial because uh, Rebecca Jennings gave a really interesting lecture on gender history. And then I selected her module the year after in my second year because I knew that I really liked her teaching style. She was really engaging and the way she taught was really conducive to the way I learn. So I think it's a really good way as well to like set you up for your future like uh, study choices because you can figure out which lecturers you really get on with and which like um, whose interests and research aligns with your own. And I, I think with with that in mind, you kind of have to understand as a first year coming in that these core modules, there's a reason that they're in the first year. They're there really to reinforce you know, how you are meant to learn history. Um, you kind of come in and you're coming from this A-level background or IB or wherever you came from. And the reality of it is, is that you weren't studying history at that high of a level compared to what we're doing, even at undergraduate. Um, and making that jump can be hard. Um, I know a lot of people struggle in first year and it's totally normal and you can struggle in first year and still get a first because at the end of the day, the way that the course is structured and the way that the marks are set up is that your first year in terms of your final overall classification really doesn't have that much of an effect. What it does have an effect on, however, is how you learn to learn. Um, and it's, it's one of those things where if you really go into these modules and you say, writing history, I'm going to learn how to write an essay. Making history, I'm going to learn about the use of primary sources and the engagement with archives and stuff like that. And then um, approaching history, which used to be called something different, um, I'm really going to learn about historiography and secondary sources and types of history. Um, what you should really be doing is you should really be saying, you know, what am I good at? What am I bad at? What do I enjoy? What do I not enjoy? And take those lessons. And when you get into your second and third year where the, the marks really do start to count, use the skills and the lessons um, to kind of make your choices on what type of history you want to do. Do make choices on how you're going to do essays. Learn how to, you know, structure your time and, and what you're good at and what you're bad at. And that's really the kind of point of the first year. Thank you so much for that, Phil, and all of you. I mean, you've really uh, summed up in an extraordinary way, you know, what each of these three cores are doing and, and what students will be spending their first year doing. And obviously, at the same time, students will also be taking other modules, right, whether it's a survey or, or interdepartmental. Um, and I guess you've touched on it a little bit, Finn, that kind of transition coming from A-level where you've done, you know, a few history essays, probably not on any topics, you know, that we'll be covering at UCL, certainly not from the kind of approaches, and then the kind of transition going into the second and third years. So it feels like the year one is like this space where there's a massive transformation, skills acquisition, but also in um, study, sort of uh, your life as an intellectual. It feels to me like a lot of students develop their voice, they develop confidence, um, they start to realize that there are some bits of history that they love and they're really great at and some bits that they just detest. And so it's a kind of real moment of transformation, I guess. And I wonder, you know, we've been talking a lot over the last few days about confidence and this this um, how to develop, how to feel like you belong here and you belong in history and you belong at UCL. And I'm just wondering, you know, if any of you have had any experiences where the cause might have helped you to develop some key skills or confidence, um, you know, over the course of that year. Yeah, so I think if you're when you when you come to UCL, um, you're going to have this weird experience 
where um, when you were at school, you were almost certainly one of the top of your class. UCL is a hard university to get into. It's one of the best universities in the world, especially for history. Um, you know, you have to be smart to get here. You have to have done something right at some point to be getting into UCL. Um, and I know for a lot of people coming in, they have this experience where they come from a very wide range of backgrounds, but no matter what, they were always kind of near the top. And they always kind of identified as someone who was smart, as someone who was good at academics, as someone who was good at history. Um, when you come to UCL, it can be really hard when you first come in because everybody's like that. And you're no longer kind of differentiated by being the most successful. I know a lot of people come in and have imposter syndrome because they're with people who are very outgoing and people who are very confident, people who are very loud. And um, they kind of think, wow, that guy knows so much, or that girl knows so much about history. I don't know that much. Am I, am I in the right place? Am I lost? Like, did I get into the wrong university? Did they make a mistake? They did not make a mistake. You are here for a reason. Everybody who got into UCL is successful. But with that being said, you have to understand that, you know, the person who's speaking the most might not be the one who knows the most. It might be what they are strong at doing and what they are good at doing. And, and, and just as much the person who says nothing might be the person who ends up getting a first and, you know, goes on to be uh, an academic. Um, so I think with like that in mind, use the first year to kind of learn what you're good at. And to kind of um, find out where your strengths are, because your strengths and your weaknesses are very, very different um, between different people. And, and the first year kind of gives you the opportunity to say, like, this is what I want to focus on. This is what I want to do in order to continue to be successful, because it's what I enjoy. Yeah, one thing I will say, this is more like to do with your survey choices, but don't just choose what you were good at in school, like what era of history or what period of history. Like I really think first year is the time where you should be branching out, especially like that's what I did. And I found something that I never thought I would have liked, but now really like and do a lot of the time, like in my choices in second and going into third year. So I really think that, yeah, first year is the chance for you to sort of see what you prefer, see what you like, and definitely don't just stick to what you learned in school. Yeah, I completely with uh, Lauren on that point because, you know, uh, when I first came to UCL, I didn't uh, study any of the medieval history before, but uh, I, I decided to, to take a risk and, and study a um, medieval module. And it turns out, it turns out really well, actually. And, and there's great professors and there are great content and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so, uh, but sometimes things went wrong, but just don't worry too much about the first year because you just, Want to try out what you like and what you enjoy and what you can do well, and and just bear bearing in mind when you do your uh, module choice stuff. Yeah, I think in terms of gaining confidence um, when exchanging intellectual ideas and first year is really important. I think making history for me was really formative in that because you're in a group and when you go around and sort of discuss in the larger seminar, which will have two other groups within it, you don't feel like an idiot if you say something wrong because you've discussed it with your group. So it's not just I think this, it's we think this. And if you get it wrong, I guess, I suppose there's less pressure on you. And you can also rely on them to back you up or come in if you feel that you have nothing else to say. And that was really important for me. I was very nervous coming in talking. I'd come from a background where I really enjoyed history and was really confident talking about it. And then I suddenly felt that I didn't have anything important to say. And in the end of first year and second year, I realized I do have something important to say. And just because I'm not all, just be, as Finn said, just because there's other people who are really confident doesn't mean they know more than you. And for those of people who are more confident, that's great. But I think making history is a great opportunity to learn to listen to the people who might not talk as much. And they will have ideas which are great and sometimes even better than yours. And you need to listen to them. So making history is a great opportunity for people who are shy, but also a great opportunity for people who are maybe overconfident. And I think that that really sort of balanced it out. And in second year, you can really see the difference. If I can just come in here from a sort of tutor's perspective, I think students sometimes look far too much at what other classmates do and just do your own thing and be your own person because you're your best when you do what you're enjoying. Uh, and just don't try to think too much about what's what's going on around you in terms of how often other people speak, how learned other people seem. 
there's often not necessarily a correlation between how active someone seems to be in seminars and how well they do uh, in exams or essays for, for that matter. Yeah, just um, adding on from that, uh, we talked quite a lot this morning about how everyone works at their own pace and works in a different way. And that is one of the benefits of being in like a diverse university. You'll soon learn that everyone works completely differently at different paces and different learning styles and revision techniques work for different people. Um, so for me in first year, I, I really panicked. If someone was ahead of me on an essay and had like finished their essay and I hadn't started writing mine yet, I'd think it was because I was work, like, you know, less talented than them or as less clever or that I was behind and I needed to like, you know, pull my socks up and get to work. But actually like I found the biggest transformation for me has been in second year and third year I now dedicate a lot of time to the planning process of essay writing and thinking about the question before I even start to research it. Um, and that has actually like, it's made my grades better because I think about and I engage with the question a lot more and I don't rush to start the essay because someone else in my class has already written theirs. Um, so I think, as Patrick was saying, just focus on what you're doing and it usually will mean that you're, you're, you do a lot better because everyone works at different paces and just because someone's faster at you than writing it doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to do better than you yeah i think that the key takeaway that you guys should really have um when it comes to your first year and kind of seeing yourself compared to others um is that everybody's in a very different situation this isn't an a-level degree or an ib where you know whatever you're doing everybody else is pretty much doing the same thing um you're all doing very different stuff in, in university, a lot of people are doing very different things outside of university. People have different commitments. Some people have jobs. Some people have sports. Some people have clubs. There's a wide range of things that you are doing that isn't writing this particular essay on this particular day. And um, the kind of time that you spend um, organizing yourself and um, writing essays and doing different kind of stages of writing um, is very, very different between people. Some people can sit down and write day uh, uh, but the take a month your skills compared to other people what you have to do really is you have to kind of learn about yourself and you have to learn what process works the best for you what speed works the best for you and and kind of compare yourself to yourself six months ago if you can say what am I doing now compared to what I was doing six months ago? If you're better than you were six months ago, you are being successful at, you know, being a history student. It doesn't really matter about what other people are doing. This is all so fascinating. And I think it's really bringing me back to the conversation we've been having over the days about um, the anchors, right? And the, the finding your anchor in the department. And to me, it seems like part of this first year and these three courses that you take and all the lessons that you go through is about kind of finding these anchors and developing really formative relationships and learning how to have healthy relationships with your colleagues and peers, right? And not feeling like you're in competition with each other, but rather you are sort of collaborating on this really long and beautiful intellectual journey that you're going on um, and, and sort of uh, accompanying each other in some ways. And so I'm wondering a little bit, you know, if we could think about what were your experiences of feeling like you're becoming part of an academic community in that first year, whether it was relationships you developed with faculty, you know, the other staff members or tutors or fellow students, or I know some of you also have had mentors. Um, and so thinking about that, the relationship between the cause um, and that induction into the academic community. Um, and, you know, I think it's such an important thing that students coming from A-levels probably haven't realised that it's up to them to develop those relationships, right, and how they go about it. And we're going to talk on another panel about the importance of making friends and how to do that, you know, or how different strategies people use to make friends. But I think also just about our intellectual relationships and anchors and sort of finding your people in the department. And I, I wonder, Adila, what, what are your thoughts on this? You know, did you find an anchor in your first year um, or did it come later? Uh, well, my first year was definitely a learning curve because um, coming from A level is just, I think everyone could agree. Um, it's such a big transition. Well, it was for me. Um, but actually, in my approaching history lectures, that's when I understood that this is 
far more than anything I thought. Like it, it, it's a big academic field. It's not, not just here's your essay, here's your reading. It's it's a discussion at the end of the day. Um, and that, you know, having different lecturers doing different, you know, uh, lectures on like global history, which is what I'm really interested in, uh, gender history and, you know, all of these histories, um, you really get an idea about all the different conversations and as J I think Jade was saying like you really understand which lecturer to go to or uh, um, if you want to have more intellectual conversations about something you're interested in so it my first year was really like a learning curve but it did like open my eyes to what history as an academic field really was so yeah um, yeah, just leading on from that, I think an important thing to understand about the dynamic you will foster with your tutors is that it's less of a um, hierarchical relationship, like they won't lord over you and they don't think they're superior to you, quite the opposite actually, I think the UCL history department has a very, it's very community based and your lecturers are very interested to like not like hear about your research and what your interests are and they are also doing their own research as they teach which is immensely be beneficial because some of the lectures that you will get be delivered are like their cutting edge research and they're like using the class to test out their ideas to see what works and see what doesn't and i think that makes you realize that you know lecturers don't have it all figured out either like they're in a process of like um working out what what their interests are still now and they're teaching and I think that's a really like refreshing perspective because you realize that um you know like you're also trying to figure out what your interest your academic interests are and it's more of a reciprocal process really because I remember in second year when I was um, doing my research seminar I was I went to LSE Women's Library and I found some sources on the women's liberation movement and I went to my tutor who was Rebecca coincidentally enough who I really liked from approaching history and I showed her my sources and she was just as excited about them as I was. And we sat and spoke about them and she spoke about what she's doing with her research at the moment. And I guess the point is that you do foster really close relationships with your tutors and they do have a genuine interest in what you're doing and where you're going. Um, yeah. I completely agree with the approaching history lectures as a, the first steps to approach uh, the lecturers working in a field that you are interested in. Because I, back in the day when I when I went to the lecture ab about constitutional history and related intellectual ideas, I, I was quite confused about uh, the current academic dynamic uh, in the field. And, and I went directly to the lecturer after the class and, and talking about the current academic environment and stuff. And, and uh, it was really helpful and, and the conversation was friendly. It was non-hierarchical. I, I even didn't know that lecturer before I talked to him. And I also uh, went a lot of to the office hours and discussing issues and all the lecturers in, I met in, in, in UCL was really helpful and friendly. Yeah, something that I took away from my second year at least was how much I wish in my first year that I'd actually gone to my tutors um, and also that realizing that there aren't any stupid questions like something you think might be stupid is actually not and your tutor will be way more happy with you to go and sort it and under like see what, why you're not understanding it than just you trying to get on with it because that's not what anyone would want. I completely agree with Lauren. In first year, I don't feel that I really had an intellectual anchor as it was, but that was purely my fault. I felt really disconnected from my lecturers because I was terrified to go and talk to them because I thought, oh, I can't go and talk to the world's leading expert on Mexico about this because he'll just look at me and talk to me like I'm an idiot, which is totally not true. And I made that assumption based on nothing. Um, and in second year, when I was more invested in my grades, and, you know, I was figuring out what I was really interested in. I, I made really close connections with all of my professors. And I realized that it wasn't because the professors last year didn't like me or just weren't as friendly. It's just I didn't take the initiative. And so I think in first year, I would really recommend that people do that because it will really make you feel um, part of this academic community. And then when you go on into second year and third year, you'll feel really confident to have these really strong relationships to help you in your research. 
Yeah, if again, if I may just add to that again from a tutor's perspective, please come and see us. Uh, there is nothing more exciting for a tutor than to have an intellectual exchange with people who have been reading the same things as you've been reading. Uh, but you need to come with ideas. I think that is the important thing. When you come and see a tutor, for example, about an essay, uh, try to have some ideas beforehand so you can actually discuss something concrete. Um, and, and therefore, please see it as an exchange as an intellectual exchange from which both sides are going to, to learn. And I think that will make university life so much more interesting for you. And I think, I think to reinforce this, um, because we've been talking a lot about this kind of academic anchor and, and feeling part of an intellectual community. And I know that that can feel quite intimidating coming in, um, but I promise you it's really not. Um, it's the sort of thing where as you make the kind of first step, as you send, you know, the first email to your professor to say, hey, can I ask a question on this? I didn't really understand. Or as you go to the first office hour to say, I have this idea for an essay. Does it make sense? It might feel scary to go do that. But for them, this is just a part of everyday life. And you have to understand, again, it, it just boils down to your own confidence. I know it's, it's always hard to be confident. People really struggle with this. But once you do it, it gets easier. And once you make that first step, the second step is nowhere near as hard. And from a very practical perspective, getting the feedback directly from these professors, getting the feedback, um, getting becoming a part of this academic community, bouncing your ideas off of other people will make you get better marks. And if you're just at university to get the marks, that's fine. That's your prerogative. We would obviously suggest that you kind of look for, you know, more than just that, especially somewhere like UCL. But even if you are just looking for marks, this is the way to get good marks. Speaking to people is the way to get good feedback and good advice. And you need feedback and advice because the reality of it is there's a lot of people who know a lot of different things. Yeah, I'm going to completely just echo what Finn just said. Um, the whole thing about it's like tutors is part of tutors everyday life to have people come and see them. And from my experience, whenever I've worried I'm going to be a burden on my tutor's time, they're actually very happy to talk to students. It's like one of the most rewarding parts of their job. And I remember in first year, my first office hour I went to, I was so, so nervous. But my tutor opened the door and I was like, oh, I'm not bothering you, am I? And he was like, absolutely not. He was like, come in. Do you want a cup of tea? Like, let's sit and chat. And it's just such a like, it was really relieving for me because I was like, OK, well, I'm not only not a burden, but they actually enjoying my company. We're having a good discussion that's benefiting both sides. And I think to say that now to incoming students so that they know that like they're never going to be a burden on their tutor's time like that's why office hours exist um is quite like it's important to exploit them i really love that we've uh, come on to the discussion of office hours because in my first year at ucl i was so surprised i had two hours of office hours every week and i mean most weeks i was you know on my own <laughs> no one, and it didn't matter how much i told students you come and see me we'll talk about things they're inevitably you know, the day with a week or two before the deadline, they sort of have queues out the office. But it's such a beautiful part of our intellectual and professional relationships is being able to debate, you know, take the conversations from seminars and readings into these other sort of one on one or two on one meetings to keep on exploring ideas. And as part of this kind of intellectual journey and to support you. Right. And you might take something from one of my courses and apply it to a different course and, you know, to kind of be accompanying you during that that journey. And I think, um, you know, we really enjoy that. It's it's it would be rare to find anyone who 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 wouldn't have time for for their students in that sense. But I guess it kind of feeds in a lot to what where our discussion's gone. This idea that we've been talking about over the days of everything that we do at UCL history is kind of like building blocks, right? It's all this kind of process. And so you know, it feels to me that you've all touched on the ways in which taking the cause served as important building blocks in different elements of your degree, whether it's the relationship to tutors, thinking about skills. And I'm just wondering if any of you have any sort of uh, brief comments, perhaps, or, or insights on something that you might have taken from one of the cores, say, into your research seminar or special subject, both of which we're going to talk about in a separate panel in a couple of days time um, or, or more, you know, in, in other courses that you've taken, just sort of thinking about it in terms of that building block, but especially from the intellectual point of view, the, the historical interests, you know, the approaches, the maybe methodology that you loved. Um, so yeah, I'm just wondering, I, I, I guess I'll maybe just pick on Kristen and Adila because I've just done a research seminar with you both. So you've both just been in a research seminar with me. You know, did you find any link between the cause and, and that? Yeah, so, yeah, so, um, 
I think <laughs> with the public history output uh, side, I guess, um, making history, we making history may be understood why pu public history um, output was so important um, as historians, I guess. Um, and in the second year research uh, seminar, um, alongside doing your 5,000 word research essay, you do uh, a public history output. And for us, it, this was a, a blog post. Um, and it really just gave like another, it, like you could do more than just writing an essay. It wasn't, you could actually engage with what you find interesting. Um, and I think making history really helped me understand that part of the, the historical um, part of history, yeah. I think for me, I agree with Azila that um, making history was really important to me because of the whole side of making history accessible and that it's not just for scholars and students and that's actually something important that everybody engages with. And um, I brought, I feel that I brought that into all the modules I've done in second year, because what I love about history is I think that it's so relevant today, whether I, I did a module on American foreign policy, and obviously that's hugely relevant because it was 20th century and it's very easy to link in, but I also did an early modern African module and I did a medieval Mediterranean module, which you know, if you don't study history, you might think is in no way relevant, but it really is. And so when I've been writing essays, specifically the research seminar, which I had more freedom to choose what I wanted to write about, I chose to write about something which I think is really important, which is the European African encounter, which a lot of people sort of present as this um, situation in which the Europeans just dominated Africa. And I thought it was really important to make it accessible to people and make people aware that this wasn't the case and actually there was this really important diplomatic relationship. So throughout, since making history, all my modules I've tried to think of, how can I make this accessible and interesting to people who don't mm -hmm. like history? Because I have a lot of friends who hate history and I'm always trying to make it interesting to them because I love it so much. So I think that's one thing that's really important to me that I learned from a core module. Um, for me, it's really like, approaching history really shaped the methodology that I like employing in my essays. So Rebecca delivered a really like good lecture on gender history and she in her own research really utilizes oral history. And before I came to UCL, I didn't even know oral history existed really. <laughs> I, did, I wasn't aware that it was a source type that we could use or make use of. And that has actually determined like my research interests since. So I have a big interest in like voices that are silenced from history and the narratives that we don't hear uh, because they are from like marginalized groups who weren't part of like the polit political hegemony of societies. So um, yeah, so that's completely just shaped what I've done in my research seminar because I did it on the women's liberation movement and a kind of silenced part of that activism. And then I did my um, dissertation on sexual violence in the Holocaust, which is such a taboo topic that is still not spoken about to this day. And I had to rely so heavily on all histories because these women in their contemporary mile were silenced by like dominant power structures in society. So all histories and interviews like in retrospect are such a valuable resource for that kind of history. So I think as well as like shaping your interests it also shapes the methodology that you then go to use in later years of your study this is all so fascinating and, and as a tutor i think patrick would agree it's so wonderful to hear uh all of the lessons in sexual journeys that you take from the cause and, and the, to now have this space and time to reflect back on it i feel really lucky and grateful and privileged to you all for giving us this chance to really think with each other about about all of this well, I just wanted to thank you all so much uh, for engaging in this really, really provocative discussion about what it's like to be in your first year, essentially, at UCL History and, and sort of what the skills, you, how we're going to help you to transition from school and the skills you're going to learn uh, to take you forward for the rest of your degree. Um, so thank you all very, very much. Mm -hmm.